Putin, who loves to travel abroad, has now decided to stay in Russia and not go to the inauguration of the Mexican president. What really stopped the Russian dictator? Let's talk with Rostislav Merzagalov, a writer, publicist and public figure. We are now broadcasting on YouTube, so I ask our viewers who join, please write where you are from, you can also ask questions to our guest, and express your opinion in the comments, please join us, be on our broadcast. Rostislav, greetings. I welcome you too, Albina, I am very glad. But in fact, you are surprised even in the formulation of the question. Listen, Putin has gangs of armed Chechens running around Moscow and killing people. Moreover, they are killing people in a conflict, in the one with which Putin asked Ramzan not to conflict, but to come to an agreement in an amicable way, because they're one of the parties to the conflict is Putin's right hand, Anton Weiner, the head of his administration. And, accordingly, well, in general, here, I think that if Putin leaves for some Mexico now, then, when he returns, he may find some Ramzan Kadyrov in his chair quite well. That is, the situation there has become very tense, because the fact is that there are two detainees in Chechnya, who were sent there to prepare no less than an attempt on Kadyrov's life, and they have already testified. Accordingly, Kadyrov is furious like a bear, he has already declared a blood feud for the fact that they tried to kill him. And, accordingly, in the Caucasus, this is not just some figure of speech. I have worked a lot in the Caucasus, I have many friends. Actually, I told about this future attack on Wildberries for the fact that a day before it began, because I knew about it, because there are contacts. And, accordingly, for the Caucasus, the declaration of a blood feud is much more important than the laws of Chechnya, Russia, or any international rules there. Accordingly, it's just that this is something that does not have a return ticket. That is, if this genie is let out of the bottle, then blood should begin to flow there. And, in fact, I predicted this, unfortunately, I turned out to be right. And this blood is being shed in Moscow, and now everyone there is at a loss, no one knows what to do with it. Because if you put the squeeze on Ramzan, then it will be a bloody third Chechen war. If this is not done, then Putin has lost his power. It is clear that if it is possible to do such things on its territory and do such things for the redistribution of property, in opposition to Putin's right-wing hands, then, accordingly, this will be the end of Putin's power. Therefore, the situation there is a stalemate, where the hell should he go? I think he will sit there now until he figures out what to do with Ramzan. Well, how unsafe is it? Because we know that all the time when some conflict situations arise, when there were these scrapes between Putin's elites, he always left, he found a place to fly, he left in the evening, there, I don't know, he had official visits in the middle of the night, now he is sitting in Moscow, it turns out, and trying to decide. You know, I don't think he's actually sitting in Moscow, because it's really dangerous in Moscow, there are many armed Chechens there who are subordinate to Ramzan, who, in general, no one knows what decision he will make, whom to kill, what to capture. And so I think that Putin is sitting somewhere nearby, that is, it is either, respectively, his residences in the Moscow region, or this, like the last time he ran away from Prigozhin, respectively, he then ran away to Valdai, in general, it was known, noticed, his train was there. And, accordingly, I think that he will sit there somewhere, but I mean that he will not leave the country now, of course. Because, indeed, if he leaves it now, then it will be very difficult to explain to his establishment why he is not directing the processes at this moment. It is very important to note even now that Kadyrov has a huge influence on Putin's power, since Kadyrov has people bought in the FSO, that is, Putin's inner circle, in the government. Recently, for example, the minister turned out to be Mishustin's assistant. That is, roughly speaking, Kadyrov has a finger on the pulse of everything that is happening in the Russian government. And, accordingly, as soon as he understands that the moment has come when it is possible to get rid of the Crusaders, as in Chechnya they have always called, in fact, Russian representatives of the generals and authorities. In general, there has never been any love there, there has always been mutual hatred. And, as a matter of fact, 
This temporary alliance is based only on the fact that after the defeat in the Second Chechen War, and I hope that you will not argue with the fact that it was a defeat, Russia paid large indemnities to Chechnya. And, accordingly, this fragile alliance was maintained, but at the same time, Ramzan, of course, is asleep and dreams that one day all these crusaders will be thrown out of the Kremlin and that he will be the all-powerful commander of all Russia. It seems like nonsense, but these conversations from the camp near Chenchenskoye, near Ramzanovsky reached me there a year ago for the first time. I then decided that this was nonsense or that it would not get out of Putin's control, because I owe Putin too much, and then I did not share it with you. But now, when my source has accurately predicted this situation with Wilderies, that armed groups will begin to run around Moscow, and, accordingly, I understand that this source, who told me that Ramzan has these ambitions of a strange scale, I think that this source is not exaggerating. What you are talking about, Putin has always found an opportunity to get even with Prigozhin, how to remove his dangers around him, let's put it this way. What do you think, what kind of permission can there be now? That is, Putin needs to involve, I don't know, the Russian army. Maybe, maybe, what kind of forces should it be that can help him now? Because, as far as I understand, this is not a matter of internal political showdowns. Alban, are you talking about the Russian army, which fled all over the Kursk region with its heels flashing when the first shot of the high rises rang out there? about this Russian army. It means that there was an answer in the question, there is no need to answer. As for how to reign in Ramzan, the answer is very simple, no how. Putin will not be able to do this. Putin's generals killed Ramzan Kadyrov's father, Akhmad Kadyrov, in time. Because all this was blamed then on some evil Chechen terrorists who killed Ahmed Kadzi. But in fact, if you look at it this way, even just logically, why would any Chechen militants kill Akhmad Kaji Kadyrov, who was happy to hire all of them? And then, in fact, the victorious Chechnya in the war, in fact, rehabilitated everyone. That is, anyone who wanted to continue to live a completely quiet life, and even not just a calm one, but quite calmly, could establish banditry anywhere in Russia, because Russia simply, in fact, was at the mercy of the plan of Kadyrov senior at that time. Accordingly, Putin's generals, the so-called power hawks, decided to eliminate Akhmad Kadzi Kadyrov so that he would not become the all-powerful master and winner, since only the federals had access to the stadium and construction. Only they knew when and where Kadzi Kadyrov would land, in which place Akhmat. And if you remember who died next to him, almost no one. That is, only he was killed directly. Because there were a lot of feds sitting around, they didn't want to kill their own. It's very simple. Accordingly, they will not work with Ramzan in such a trick, because Ramzan, understanding and knowing that the feds are not his friends, he cleaned out everyone there, there is not a single one left. Accordingly, there is not a single one left. All federal structures there are now formally, they are almost all subordinate to him. Some pathetic people, they do not have any information, and they are completely removed from any decision, any more or less important issues. They simply do not know when and where Ramzan will be. And, accordingly, it means that they do not know how to eliminate it. Look, now a decision has been made, as it were, to take Ramzan's people. That is, they have already taken up to 30 people over the past two days, according to some reports. It means that they are just running around Moscow and trying to grab them, arrest them. Accordingly, some have already been charged, which is very fast, which is very surprising for the Russian legal system, which is extremely cumbersome, surprisingly clumsy. And in order to even accuse, charge, open a criminal case about a person who kills a hundred people with a machine gun in front of cameras on the square, this still requires a lengthy procedure. That is, the fact that today charges have been brought so quickly against this Bukalchuk, 
Kadyrov's accomplice in wild brisk, and, accordingly, these Chechens, bandits who came there to solve problems and exterminate their opponents. This suggests that the decision was made at the very top. That is, the decision was made at the level, I think, even, perhaps, of Putin personally, since arresting Ramzan's people is a dangerous business in Russia. Accordingly, the war, of course, agreed with Putin. Ramzan understands this very well. That is, he understands that today he has a fight not just with Valen, as with Putin's right hand, but with Putin himself, who is now trying to rein in Ramzan a little and deprive him of this omnipotence a little. And, accordingly, how can it end? That is, look at what the scenarios are. That is, Kadyrov suddenly cooled down, backed down and stopped the blood feud. Is there such an option? No, there is no such option, since blood feud cannot, according to the laws of the Caucasus, end simply with the fact that one of the parties is advancing. This party instantly loses moral authority in the eyes of its own supporters, in the eyes of its clan. Accordingly, there is no such decision. What solutions did you give? They decided to eliminate Kerimov, because revenge was declared on him. It means that Kerimov is hiding very well. He knows well who Ramzan is, he knows well that he is the first target, because killing wars is not such an easy thing. Here, all those who surround wars can be very offended by Ramzan. And, accordingly, what other options are there? Shouldn't we turn the table over completely? And shouldn't we take, for example, Ramzan today? Let's fantasize, right, this is our job, we are the media, we are not the authorities, we are not politics. Let's fantasize, let's imagine today that Ramzan today says that Chechnya is separated from the Russian Federation. That today is all, we stop any payments to you, which means any taxes. And, by the way, we are also taking half of the Caucasus for ourselves because it's all almost Chechnya too. We declare independence and we join the Saudi Arabian alliance. For example, tell me, what will Putin do in this situation? The answer is very simple, nothing. It cannot withstand any new front even in its own Kursk region, as we have seen during the brilliant operation of the armed forces of Ukraine in recent months. I was convinced with my own eyes when I visited there. Accordingly, the question then arises, can Kadyrov try to do something like this? Yes, of course, it can. Because Kadyrov was born and raised in the paradigm of war and in the paradigm of hatred for everything Russian. And, accordingly, he never considered his Chechnya to be Russia. And moreover, he has always seen himself as the main one in all the territories where he is physically. And, accordingly, where will his appetites end, where will his determination end? What prevents him from pumping up more human resources in Moscow today, from the thousands of people that he already has there, there, to bring there another 10,000 people, for example, from various other places, and simply take and seize power in Moscow itself? That is, he can simply take and seize the Kremlin today. Nothing interferes with him. Moreover, taking into account the fact that, as I told you a little above, all those who are at the posts there are all Ramzan's people in many respects bought. And, accordingly, this is, in general, a situation when they will scatter even faster than when Prigozhin appears. Because Prigozhin was at least from their midst, at least he was Russian, at least it made less sense for him to hate other Russians. And Ramzan also has this motivation, mind you, and he has been hiding it for 20 years. Therefore, how can all this end, or anything? And now we are watching the development of events with great interest. And it will happen literally, I think, every day. That is, now the situation is in the legal field, so to speak. And there are arrests going on there now. But then how will Kerimov respond to Ramzan? Because Kerimov's first people were killed. These are not quite directly his people, roughly speaking, these are not Dagestanis, like Kerimov, these are Ingush organized crime groups, which Kerimov hired, entered into an alliance with them to defend against Kadyrov. But, nevertheless, these were people who were officially with him in his service. Even in the process of this announced decision in the hiding place, Kirimov is obliged, according to the laws by which he, like Ramzan, lives, to respond to Ramzan in the same way. That is, roughly speaking, now we should expect a couple of dead on Ramzan's side. I am now cynically talking about this, but forgive me, I am just trying to explain to people what is happening. I expect a further escalation of events, which could become a Bigford Cord and eventually set all of Russia on fire. What you are talking about is really inspiring. This is a good story for Ukraine in the current war, especially if Kadyrov chops off part of Russia. This will be a serious blow to Putin's power and his authority.
I wonder how the Russians will react to this, given the influence of propaganda and brainwashing. How will they perceive the division of Russian lands? Could this be the end of the current regime? Alban, a question. Look how Russians reacted to the announcement that part of Russia has ceased to be part of Russia. That is, the Kursk region today is 1,250 kilometers, it is no longer Russia. This is a territory that is larger than several dozen countries in the world, for a second. And what did the Russians say? No problem. They are a big amorphous mass for Putin today. This is both a plus and a minus. Actually, for Putin, it is a plus when he does whatever he wants with this amorphous mass, with this plasticine. It says that we have enemies there, we are all urgently immersed in black, which means polyethylene bags. So, accordingly, in this sense, it works for Putin. But when everything goes in the opposite direction, when part of Russia is seized, when today there are arrivals all over Russia, when today earthquakes happen from the work of the armed forces of Ukraine. And what did the Russians say about the earthquake? Did they run to register at the military registration and enlistment office? No. They still have wild shortfalls there. They are still trying to imprison on the arcana on huge money more than the Americans pay for soldiers. And even that doesn't help. And, accordingly, if today Kadyrov says that he is taking part of Russia there and living separately, then the Russians will also anoint him with a blue handkerchief. For God's sake, take everything you want. They are afraid of the Chechens like fire, because everyone remembers how Russia tried to fight twice in Chechnya, and how it failed miserably all military operations both times and in the end simply overwhelmed Ramzan with money, indemnities for, in fact, two losses. As far as I understand, this is a story that for Kadyrov can end either with his, say, this victory, or there is no other option, as far as I understand, because, well, otherwise for Kadyrov himself, for his henchmen, it will be a rather deplorable story. How quickly can it be resolved? You're right, Ramzan really doesn't have the ability to back down. It's not just a matter of money, because even if he doesn't have wild berries, there are other resources. For example, Danon recently presented him with an enterprise comparable to wild berries. That is, they just took him and gave him away for loyalty. So, accordingly, what will happen next? My forecast, yes, here, yeah, of course, a forecast is a thankless job, but my forecast is still an escape. The prognosis is that those who were killed by Kadyrov must be avenged, respectively, by Kerimov, as the organizer of this whole scheme. I think that retaliatory killings will be organized, some of the Kadyrovites. Thus, Viner, as a person associated with Kerimov in this new wild verse, will try to put pressure on Kadyrov by administrative methods and bring charges against him using police methods. But for Kadyrov, as for a person who lives by his own laws, all the police rules and all the laws of the Russian Federation are just an unnecessary irritant. He will tell Putin, what are you, father, doing to me, how come? I'll tell you faithfully, I'm your infantryman. How many good tweets I've written about you, you know. As a matter of fact, that's why I don't see any possibility of measuring here. Putin must also now save face. And for Putin, this is now a terrible question. That is, if he now starts running to Kadyrov again and persuading him again after Kadyrov put him in a vat of shit in public. Imagine, Putin asks Kadyrov not to do this, but Kadyrov still carries out a forceful seizure of wild berries and commits murders in the center of Moscow just 300 meters from the Kremlin. Therefore, of course, wherever you throw it, there is a wedge here. And this, in general, is a common classic situation. It has been repeatedly described in political literature. This is the classic departure of such an empire. This is the classic autumn of the patriarch there. This empire in this autumn and the road, as they say. Do you think the West understands the real situation that is now happening in Russia, and whether they are waiting for a resolution of this situation, or still continue to negotiate with Putin on these so-called Russian peace initiatives, to look for some compromises? You know, the West should not be underestimated in terms of intelligence. The West has it well staged, and moreover, they have such multi-move combinations about breaking away from dictators, 
for example, their henchmen, and now I have long had information that Ramzan has become frequent visitors to Arab countries for a reason. And there are, in general, people in Arab countries who work very closely with the CIA. Some people have long given Ramzan warnings, saying, if you want to live happily ever after and keep your fiefdom, you need to betray Putin at some point. Accordingly, this is for Putin's betrayal, especially since Putin for Ramzan, and this is not a betrayal, for Ramzan it will be the fulfillment of the centuries-old will of him, all his ancestors and so on. Accordingly, it will be a matter of honor for him if at some point he overthrows this Putin, if he removes these crosses that the Chechens are wearing on him today, even in the form of Russian money. There is such a topic that there are crosses on money. Accordingly, for a Chechen believer, this is a very unpleasant situation when you have a physical cross on you. Or, for example, on parts of the uniform that they wear in Russian, there are also crosses. Accordingly, they will gladly try to get rid of the crosses at the first opportunity. Especially if I am really right, if I have correctly received signals from those people who inform me that Ramzan has indeed received approval in the Arab countries, roughly speaking, for such a separation. Accordingly, this is a good time to use this moment. Well, what do you think? What is the best thing for Putin to do in this situation? He does not have the right solution. I understand your question, but if you try to suppress Ramzan, he will respond very harshly. That is, this can lead to escalation, to an explosion. If they do not answer, then Putin's own elites will be, in general, hurt and they will understand that that's it, a killer mist, there is no longer his leader. And, accordingly, Putin, after all, as he has been in power all these quarter of a century, he has always been a mediator of conflicts, perhaps. That is, roughly speaking, everything is as usual. In fact, those who call today's Russia not a state, but an organized criminal group, that is, a criminal group, are really right here. That is, there is a guy who, roughly speaking, you are right, says you are wrong, and, accordingly, he resolves conflicts. And those who received these commands, they agreed with this. They say, damn it, I'm wrong, so I'm leaving, yes, I've lost money, lost something, but I'm alive, healthy, so there is no big conflict situation. And today Putin came specifically to Grozny to sort out the situation, but he was sent to hell. Today, Putin already looks like a lame duck to his own people, starting with his right hand, which, excuse me, brings him a pot in a suitcase. And he also carries a suitcase with a nuclear button behind him. And in general, every step controls him. Yes, this is the head of his administration, who tried to steal his business. This means that Putin approved of this theft, but, accordingly, did not approve of Ramzan. That is, what should they do next, to bow straight to Ramzan, to all these officials? You see, there are no good decisions for Putin here, and any he makes will be bad. I am very much looking forward to his making some decisions, because they will all lead to his beauty. If we consider the situation as the work of the CIA, then it is interesting to see how much Putin benefits from accepting Ukrainian conditions and a peaceful settlement, including the withdrawal of troops. This, of course, is speculation, but if he has a really catastrophic situation, perhaps he will be ready to consider the Ukrainian peace formula. You have rightly noted that Putin, analyzing the current conflict situation, faces severe inter-elite problems. This is not only the conflict between Ramzan and Vina, there are many other intersections. Not everyone is as radical as Ramzan, who immediately takes up arms and starts shooting at Moscow. That is, he has a lot of such faults, and, accordingly, at some point he must understand that his only way to survive is really to survive, that is, roughly speaking, how to regain physical strength over Ramzan. This means means that it is necessary to remove the place where he spends this physical force in wild quantities, and this, of course, is Ukraine. When I hear talk that the war could last for months, I believe it with interest. Each month of prolongation of the conflict for Putin could mean that one of the inter-elite conflicts, whether with Ramzan or others, could end up physically eliminating him. 
Америки, это для Путина чревато тем, что вот какой-то из межэлитарных конфликтов, неважно, будет ли это... Accordingly, I have also said many times that some of the elite groups at some point will decide that they no longer need this Putin. You see, for example, today Vayner is sitting in the bathhouse with some Ortenbergs and Kovalchuks, and they are discussing everything. Listen, he's completely crazy. Look at what Ramzan is doing on our streets. And he swallows all this and gave us the command to release all the detainees, for example. And Putin, I think, will give this command. Yes, that's it, he's not the president anymore. For example, they come to such a decision, and that's it, and then it's a matter of technique. Accordingly, we wait, wait, wait. If, say, Putin is removed, suddenly this happens, how do you think the war in Ukraine will end? Or what will happen? Headlong. The war will end quickly as soon as Putin leaves. Because any new influential people after Putin, they will understand that this is the Achilles heel that killed Putin. In February 2022, I began to say that this would be Putin's political and probably physical death. It was clear to me that he would not be able to compete with the civilized world and defeat it. As a matter of fact, the those who will replace Putin, they will have this story right in front of their eyes, this Putin, who was actually fine. After all, he was absolutely omnipotent, there was zero opposition, there was nothing. And, accordingly, suddenly he comes up with this yoke around his neck in the form of a mad war, moreover, in the form of a clash with the entire democratic world. And what do you think, after all, in our country, what should we be prepared for? And how exactly will Russia, I mean, be able to develop further after? Well, we are getting very far ahead of ourselves. But if suddenly the current Russian government is overthrown, then how can we continue to build relations with the country that remains our neighbor in one way or another? In any case, this side will remain, yes. I understood that the question was according to Zelensky's plan. In any case, this side will be preserved in some form, yes. That is, it is clear that, most likely, parts of it will fall off. I think that the Caucasus will not withstand under any circumstances, because the centrifugal force there is too great. I have never considered the Caucasus and Siberia to be completely Russian, but now, against the backdrop of all the nonsense, rivers of blood and other things, that are happening, it is worth remembering that ordinary people, hard workers who are absolutely not delighted with what is happening live in the Caucasus. Therefore, I think that the Caucasus is definitely out of the game, but as for the rest of Russia, for Ukraine, the most important thing is that since it will not be possible to make the Moscow see there, yes, in the place where Russia is now, it means that there will be some country there. Then it is very important that this country is democratic. It is very important that this country is not an empire, that it is not super centralized, like the last 10 years. Accordingly, it is important for Ukraine that it is a country where the votes of the regions are important for Ukraine, it is important that it is a country that does not bring all the resources, all the power into one center, because then it is easy to direct them to some kind of cronyism in the form of more tanks or missiles. And, accordingly, if such a country appears, then at some point a situation will arise when there will be an adequate government, which will inevitably have to pay, both literally and figuratively, for the crimes of the previous regime. This means that it will have to pay indemnities to Ukraine, plead guilty, lustration of all those who took part in this, and, of course, bring war criminals to trial, no matter how many there are. Even if a million people are recognized as war criminals, then a million judges will be needed, two, then two. So, accordingly, after all this happens, perhaps someday there will come a moment when the consequences will be overcome, just as in Europe now the consequences of World War II have basically been overcome. Perhaps in our case the consequences will be overcome, but it will happen just as painfully and, I'm afraid, just as slowly. Rostislav, I am very grateful to you for this conversation, for your analysis, I will tell you frankly. This conversation did not go exactly as I imagined it initially, but you said a lot of interesting things. The forecasts that you are giving are really very inspiring, especially for Ukrainians, who now most of all want an end to the war, but an end with the liberation of Ukrainian lands, so that our country can live in peace.
Thank you very much, Rostislav Merzogulov, writer, publicist and public figure. Thank you. See you later. Goodbye.